Okay. Amen. Praise God. Hello, hello. Good evening. Good evening, Miss Dorothy. Good evening. Praise God. Good evening, Brother Timothy. Amen. Everybody, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Wednesday night Bible study. Welcome, Miss Susie. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. We're so happy to have you all join us tonight for midweek Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study. Hallelujah, as people are coming in. Glory to God. Miss Lula, hello, Miss Lula. Praise God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God is good. I'm so glad to see all you guys coming in to Bible study tonight. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Glory to God. We're going to get started here, waiting for a few more people to come on in. So glad to see that Mother Mary Moore is listening. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you. Thank God for Mother. Amen. Praise God. I tell you, God is good. God is good. Glory to God. We thankful to the Lord for this day and so excited to have you all join us for our midweek Bible study here at New Beginnings. Amen. I'm Minister Logan, and I'm standing in again tonight for Pastor. Good evening, Miss Ross. Good evening. And as I'm standing in, Pastor wanted me to let everyone know that uh, he is uh, in Detroit. He and Pastor Leslie. Good evening, Miss Deborah. Good evening. Glory to God. Pastors in Detroit this uh, week, he and Pastor Leslie visiting family. So I'm standing in for him tonight and praise God. We're going to go ahead and get started because time is moving. Amen. And I don't want to uh, go over the time. Amen. Praise God. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer as we uh, get into the word tonight. <clears throat> Glory to God. Father, we just thank you tonight. We give you praise and glory and honor, O oh Lord God. We thank you for your word. And we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your word will go forth tonight unhindered or influenced by any outside forces. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and our guide in all the affairs of life. We thank you for the opportunity, Father, to be able to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn of him. And as we dive into your word, we ask you to anoint our ears that may, we may hear what the spirit of the Lord will say to us. And so that we can grow up a little more until we come into the fullness and the measure and the stature of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord God, we exercise our faith tonight by binding up the devil, render him helpless and a defeated foe. We thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that as we open up your word, it would become revelation knowledge to us. And Lord, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for everyone that is joining in tonight. And we thank you for it. Thank you for our pastors. Father, for you have given us pastors after your own heart. And therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, we always want to acknowledge the good and perfect gifts that you have given to us in the body of Christ. We are grateful, we are thankful, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for Miss Bessie, Miss Trina. Amen. Glory to God, Miss Betty. Amen. Praise God. Well, I won't be able to say good evening to everybody, but I'll say a good evening to everybody. Well, tonight we have a great word tonight. Amen. So get ready. 
I'm not T.D. Jakes, but I'm going to say get ready, get ready. Glory to God. We have a good word. And we know that every word of God is good. So we are going to be going to a very familiar passage of scripture tonight, one that you heard on Sunday. Uh, because pastor, uh, on Sunday, I know you can agree with me that we had a wonderful time Sunday at the opening of our new church. The word of God went forth. Amen. Glory to God. We were excited. Amen. To hear the word of God. And so as I have been looking over that word, glory to God, and I've been getting that word in my spirit, we're going to be jumping off tonight, or you can say, I am going to uh, take a word that uh, from a scripture that pastor gave, and I'm going to just add to it as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance tonight. Amen. Praise God. How many of you know that God's word is always giving new facets of revelation? And so our first text scripture is coming from Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5. We have uh, three text scriptures tonight. Glory to God. That's Revelation 21, 5. Amen. And also Deuteronomy 30 and 19 part B. And we're going to also do John, St. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Let me read um, uh, Revelation 21 and 5 first. Revelation 21 and 5. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it says this. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Glory to God. That's our first text scripture. Now let's go to Deuteronomy. Go over to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Amen. Uh, and we're going to look at verse 19. Part B of that scripture is going to be our text scripture, but I'm going to read verse 19 in its entirety. And I'll tell you what to underline so that you can be able to follow in the scripture as the Holy Spirit leads you. God said to the children of Israel as they was about to go into the promised land. In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 is the last leg of the journey. And in verse 19, God himself said this, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death. Underline that. I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Glory to God. I've read you uh, thus far Revelation 21, 5 and Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Let's go to our third text scripture over in St. John uh, chapter 10. Glory to God. St. John chapter 10. And let's look at verse 10. St. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus says here, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have, they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. They may have life and they may have it more abundantly. These are our three text scriptures. Glory to God. And I want you to go back to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 5. What uh, is the significance for tonight's message of 20, uh, Revelation 21 and 5? Well, number one, we received a word on Sunday. I know, whoo -hoo, great word from the Lord. And one of the things that the Revelation 21 and 5 as pastor was recasting the vision to us. And he says, Revelation 21, five is where we got our church name, a new beginning. And he read that scripture and it said, God said that behold, I am about to do a new thing. He said, write it down. And the pastor uh, expounded on that. But then when pastor began to give us 
other translations of 21 and 5, he said that God says, I'm about to do uh, something that's new and fresh in a different translation. That is what caught my spirit. God is going to do a new thing. And God is telling us to write it down. And so he said in a different translation, I'm about to do something for you. You can put your name there. I put my name there, made it personally. He said, I'm about to do something for you that's new and fresh. Amen. You ought to go ahead and declare that right now. God is about to do something for me that's new and fresh. Hallelujah. So as I was be, knew that I was going to be ministering, I had been uh, re, uh, taking these scriptures that's from Sunday and reading over and over and over them, getting them down in my spirit. The Holy Spirit told me that I, we need to get ready from, for the new and the fresh. Get ready for the new thing. And then he says, what, when the new and fresh come, you're going to have to choose. You're going to have to make a choice whether to go with the new and the fresh or to stay wherever you are. And then pastor went on to say to us, as he outlined for us in Isaiah 43, 18, where God says, don't remember the past. He says, don't even think about it. Don't consider it. In one translation, he says, don't go over old history. So that tells me, and God told me by the Holy Spirit, when this new and fresh comes on the scene, that you and I, we're going to have to choose whether to stay where we are with the old or go with the new and fresh. And so therefore, I read you uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. So Deuteronomy 30, 19, as the children of Israel about to go into the new and fresh. Come on now, somebody. They are in the wilderness right now. And they had been in this wilderness for 40 years. And God is saying to us, I don't want you to stay nowhere 40 years. I want you to get your walking shoes on, make up in your mind that you're going to go with the new and the fresh. So you're going to have to make a choice. And I read to you in Deuteronomy 30, 19, where God says, I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. Choose life. Glory to God. Amen. And when we choose life, that's the new and fresh where God wants to take us. And I'm saying to you today, Jesus said to us himself over in St. John chapter 10. He says, I want to give you. Uh, he says, I, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, what do you I mean? Have it more abundantly. Well, the Amplified Version says right here that I want to fill, give you life uh, to the full until it overflows. That's the fresh and the new. The children of Israel were about to go into the promised land. And so that would be fresh and new. Well, God is about to do something so fantastic for us. But we're going to have to make choices. We're going to have to make choices. We have to make choices daily. I said we have to make choices daily. So what we're going to have to do is embrace the fresh and the new. That's the title of our Bible study tonight. Embrace the fresh and the new. You don't have to stay where the old is. Don't embrace the old. Don't hold on to it. What God is saying to you and me as I uh, speak forth the word of God tonight by the Holy Ghost. Not my will, but his will. And he's saying to us is that in order to uh, embrace the fresh and new, there's going to have to be change. You're going to have to make a choice either to stay in the wilderness. Come on now. or move to the promised land. Do you want to go to the promised land? The place where it flows with milk and honey. God wants us there. So we have to embrace the fresh and the new. Because that is going to require change. And God had told us there in Isaiah 43 and 18 uh, and, and verse 18. It says, don't remember the past. The children of Israel had to forget the past. Come on now. 
And the enemy wants to keep us stuck in the past. People don't like change. No, people just don't like it. When you're talking about embracing the fresh and the new, that calls for change. And people get anxiety about going and, 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 and embracing change. I have worked on uh, several jobs, not many jobs in my life, because I one was always stayed with it until it was time to go. And I have worked with people. When they come in, oftentimes I uh, was the trainer that trained them in their position. And they always would have so much anxiety because they would say, I, I'm not going to stay here long because I don't like this. I'm going to go back to my old job. A lot of people now are, won't, don't want to embrace change so they won't be able to partake of the fresh and the new because they have become familiar with the place that they are in. We don't want to become too familiar that we can't go where God wants us to go because the fresh and the new is going to advance you. God is not in the business of regression. He is in the business of progression. He wants to take us to a better place in him. He wants to move us to a higher place in him. And so it's important that we embrace this fresh and the new. So let's look at some other scripture. Glory to God. Because when we talk about choices, glory to God, what does choice mean? God says to choose life. What is God saying uh, to us? Choices are a range of possibilities that uh, God sets before us uh, to give us not only the opportunity, but he also give us a right and a privilege to choose from. God is not twisting our arms to make us embrace the fresh and the new, to take hold of it. But what he wants us to do is to choose the right path uh, freely. Because when you have been given a choice, you have been given freedom. Like the children of Israel. They were in bondage in Egypt and God delivered them. They came out of Egypt and God brought them to the Red Sea. And I want you to know tonight when God uh, gives you the opportunity to embrace, um, uh, embrace change, don't worry about it because he's going to be with you. I said he is going to be with you all the way while you embrace that change. I want to read to you now from Deuteronomy chapter 30 from another, another translation in verse 19. Deuteronomy 30, 19 from the Amplified says that God has set before us life and prosperity, which is good, and death and adversity, which is evil. He, another translation says this, that he has set before us the blessing and the curse. Now, the CEV translation, which is the English, uh, the contemporary English version of the scripture in verse uh, 19, uh, in verse 18, excuse me, at uh, verse 19, excuse me. He says, I'm offering you, come on now, somebody, I'm offering you this choice, glory to God. And if God is offering us this choice to embrace the fresh and the new, why don't we take it? Why don't we take it? God did that for the children of Israel. He offered them something fresh and new, which was the promised land. But because they chose to complain and talk about what God had brought them out to do, to, uh, to, to, to brought them out there to die, God says that he was not pleased with them. So we don't want God to be displeased with us. We want him to be pleased with us and choose the fresh and the new. Oh, a life without choices. Come on, every one of us have to make choices every day. You can choose to stay in bed all day or you can choose to get up. You can choose to go to work or you can choose to call in. We have choices every day and we make these choices. Why is it so difficult for us to make choices that is going to benefit us uh, in 
the blessings of God. So he wants us to make choices. When we choose a life without making the choice, then someone else is going to make the choice for you. And when you can say it this way, choices is about decisions. You decide what you're going to do. God says here in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, look, decide that you're going to, uh, what you're going to do. Choose life and death or blessings and curses. He said, but I'm encouraging you to choose the blessing and choose life. Amen. So when we give men given opportunities to choose, I want you to know it's a privilege. It's a privilege and an honor. God is giving us in another way you can say it is options. God is giving us options. Uh, he's given us an opportunity do, to decide one or two things, to go with him or to go with your own decision. And we should never go with our own decision. When God gives us options, he's telling us what option to take for our own uh, uh, good life. And so we can choose. And as we looked at these verses right here, I want you uh, to go with me. Amen. Uh, to what scripture I want to go to. I want you to go with over with me uh, to let me find my scripture here. Go with me uh, uh, to first Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 21. Glory to God. Because I want to let's show you here an example of choosing where God uses an, an example here uh, with the prophet talking to the people of God. First Kings chapter 18. We are the people of God. I know you can agree with me. I am a child of God. In first Kings chapter 18 and verse uh, 21. Let's look here. Here is an example. Before I go to uh, verse 21, I'm going to start here at verse 17 and read down to verse 21. It says here, Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now I'm asking you tonight, who you following? You're going to have to choose. Amen. You said, well, Minister Logan, I'm on God's side. Yes, I am. I'm on God's side. Glory to God. And so uh, here in verse 19, it says, now therefore send and gather all Israel to me. God is saying that. On Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets, Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. It's about to be a showdown. Whenever you getting ready to embrace change, come on now, somebody. It's going to have to be a showdown. You're going to have to choose because God is going to give you options. Whose side are you on? Are you going to be on God's side? To embrace this fresh and the new? Are you going to stay on the other side? Right where you are right now. Where you and I are. Glory to God. Because we haven't got the whole message. Because pastor going to do that on Sunday. And I'm not trying to preach his message. I'm trying to obey God. To get you ready for his message on Sunday. Because you're going to have to make a choice. You got an option here. And he's giving you a good choice. God don't give us bad choices. He's going to give us a good choice. And it's going to have to, you're going to have to choose which side that you are on. And so in verse 20. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel. That's us. Because God is saying, okay now. I'm about to do a new thing. It's going to be fresh. And it's going to be new. And I told you, don't consider what happened in 2021. I'm going to, he's saying that he wants us to know that it is important that we, amen, want to give him the glory and the honor and the praise for giving us this choice. I want you to say I'm on the Lord's side. Glory to God, because it's going to be a showdown. 
Yes, it is. So Abraham, so verse 20, so Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. Verse 21. And Elijah came to all the people and said, listen to this. How long? Come on now, somebody. How long will you halt between two opinions? Now, I'm telling you right now, God is saying there are two opinions. What side are you going to be on? He says, how long you will you halt between two opinions? One translation says that how long will you falter? Another word for falter is the waver. Well, well I don't know. I want to embrace change. I want to stay right where I am. Well, let me tell you, it is said that familiarity breeds contempt. Because if you don't choose where you are, it's going to be not good for you. It's going to be contemptible. So we want to move when God tells us to move. Look what Elijah says, part B of verse 21. If the Lord is God, come on somebody. If the Lord is your God, come on now somebody. Follow uh, him. But Baal, if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him not a word. You can't do that. You cannot answer. You're going to have to choose. Come on now, somebody. You got to be on God's side. And if you're on God's side, glory to God, God is on your side. Amen. You either be going to be for him or you're going to be against him. He can, I mean, I'm telling you the truth. You can got to be with God. It's going to got to, it's got to be. You got to be hot or cold. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because lukewarm, he don't. He don't like lukewarm. Lukewarm, he spew you out. Glory to God. So we want to embrace this change. We want to be where God is. We want to, uh, where God is, is the goodness. In Deuteronomy, it told us that. He says, where God is, there is life and there is the blessing. Where on somewhere else, stand where somewhere else, then there is going, you are being disobedient to where God wants to take you. How many of you want to go where God wants you to go and be where God wants you to be? You ought to say, I want to be on God's side. No matter how tough it gets, it got tough. Come on now. But God was always with the children of Israel. Glory to God. Amen. He is always, or he was always with the children of Israel. You go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I want you to look at, uh, let's look at in verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 9. Because God was trying to get them to embrace change. They got used to being in that wilderness. They've been there 40 years until that generation died out. Come on now, somebody. Glory to God. And so in verse 9, it says here in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 9, it says, the Lord your God, come on somebody say my God, the Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand. God wants to bless you. He said, uh, he gave me a promise and it's in the word of God. He said, everything my hands touch shall and will prosper. Do you want to be where the prosperity is? Do you want to be that prosperity? And now I'm talking about financial prosperity, but I'm also talking about prosperity in your family, prosperity in your mind, prosperity in your body. Come on, God wants to take you somewhere, but you're going to have to embrace where he wants to take you. Glory be to God. He wants you to, he says, I want you to abound in all the work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord again will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. Come on, somebody, my God. I'm telling you, I'm getting too excited. I need to calm myself down here. God wants to bless you, but if you don't embrace where he's trying to take you, then you're going to be in the wilderness. Come on, somebody. What do I have to do there? Obey what he tell me. He says to embrace the fresh and the new. He says, don't remember the past. Don't even let it enter your thought life. Come on, somebody. Don't even think about it. 
Don't oh, go over old history. Everything that has been in 2021, you're going to have to leave it behind. Build your faith up until it becomes unshakable, stalwarted, grounded, rooted. So whatever comes to trying to shake you out of this fresh and the new, you will be standing when the dust settles. Because I ain't going nowhere. I'm going with God. Now let me also say this to you. When you get ready to embrace the fresh and the new, you're going to have somebody in your camp that's going to try to get you, amen, to stay over right where you are. Child, you don't need to go over there. You know what you got right here, but you don't know what's over cross over there. You don't know if they're going to lay off, but if God tell you to go over there, it don't matter who get laid off. You're going to still be going because God going to create a place for you. Come on now, somebody. You're going to have to, you're going to have to choose to embrace the good life. And God is saying that to us. He wants to do something new and he wants to do something fresh. Anything that's new is not old. And any that thing that's fresh is not stale. So God wants to do something new and not old, fresh and not stale. Come on now, somebody. I tell you what, everybody likes to have something fresh and something new. Glory to God. God is in the business of creating the fresh and the new. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to say uh, also this. Let's go over uh, to, because they, they, they got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Go with me to St. John chapter 6. St. John, glory to God, chapter 6. Don't halt between two opinions. Come on, choose what you want to do. Say what you're going to say. Do what you're going to do. And let everything else fall in its place. Because this is what I... I'm going to do. That's what you should say. This is where I'm going and this is what I'm going to do. Even if you don't make a choice, you still have made a choice. Come on now, somebody. Well, I'm not going to make no choice. You made one. You chose not to. Come on now, somebody. Let me go over here to St. John chapter 6. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here Jesus is speaking, St. John chapter 6, and uh, uh, let's begin there uh, at verse uh, 58, verse 58. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He says here, Jesus said, this is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead, he who eats this bread will live forever. Then he say that I came that you may have life and, uh, and, and have an abundance until it overflow. When you choose to eat the bread of life, which is obeying God's word. Look what he said. He, verse 59. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? Glory, I want to stop it right there. You might not understand. Come on now, somebody. Where God is taking you. Well, I don't know about what's going on with the fresh and new. I don't understand what he is saying. Well, don't lean to your own understanding. Proverbs chapter 3, uh, 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 and verses 3 through 5. He said, don't lean to your own understanding. But in all your ways... Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So he said this. They said this is a hard thing. Who can understand it? And when Jesus knew in himself that the, his disciples complained about this. Come on now, somebody. He said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the son of man ascend where he was before? Verse 63. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Verse 64. For Jesus knew from the beginning 
who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. See, God knows already what's in our heart. He knows who's going to embrace the fresh and the new, and he knows who is not going to embrace the fresh and the new. Let me just backtrack a little bit and go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, when the children of Israel came up out of Egypt, the Bible says there was a mixed company that came with them. I tell you, some of you in your uh, close circle, there are some people in there is of a mixed company. And those people are the ones, when you get ready to make this change, those are the people that's going to say to you, I don't think you ought to do that. You already know this. And you already know that you going somewhere that you are not familiar with. But God is always in the business of taking us somewhere where it's not familiar when he's taking us. You might not know like these disciples didn't know and like the children didn't know where the promised land was. Some of them followed him. But then the mixed crowd said, let's go back to Egypt. Now, going forward, choosing to go with God is freedom. I read it to you. He wants to embrace, the, he wants them to embrace this freedom. He wants to bless the work of their hands. He wants to bless their livestock with increase to money. He wants to increase their harvest, when it, uh, which is your bank accounts. He wants to bless the work of your hands and your body. But see, the devil then got a mixed crowd. And that crowd wants you to go back to Egypt. At least in Egypt, we had flesh pots. Who wants the flesh pots when you got all of God's best at your hand? See, in Egypt, somebody else owned the flesh pots. But in the promised land, you own the flesh pots. Come on, somebody. Do you want to go where God wants you to go? Come on. God says when you embrace my words, what I tell you to do, the fresh and the new, I'm going to be a blessing you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He wants to bring us uh, from darkness to light. He wants to bring us from darkness uh, to light. Hallelujah. A life filled with his goodness. Amen. And God told us in Deuteronomy 13, uh, uh, 30 and 19, he had witnesses. He said, glory to God. He has witnesses. Who are they? Heaven and earth. And one choice will bring us life, the good life, and not embracing this fresh and the new is going to put us back. Go with me to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. Because God don't want us to be deceived. Come on now. Deception. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Deception is something else, I tell you. Have you ever been deceived? I have. I don't mind saying it. Glory to God. Glory to God. In Galatians chapter 6, glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 6 says here at verse 7, Galatians, uh, oh yeah, my wrong chapter. Excuse, excuse me. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Seven says, do not be deceived. Come on now. Don't be deceived because guess what? Nobody is exempt from deception. It can be seen so real to you and you think that you're on the right track. You think you are embracing the fresh and the new because the devil that made it look so good. Come on, he'll change just a little bit. Ooh, glory to God. He'll change just a little bit where you think you're on that road to the fresh and the new, but you're still sitting right where you are. Come on now, somebody. He said, do not be deceived. Get glory to God. Part A. That's what I want you to underline. Highlight. Part A. Because deception will not, uh, will prevent you, excuse me, from embracing the fresh and the new. Go with me to Proverbs. Proverbs, glory to God, amen, and chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 14, and let's look at verse 12, glory to God, I want you to embrace the fresh and the new already, get your mind ready, hallelujah, make up in your mind, hallelujah, 
I am embracing the fresh and the new. Glory to God. Proverbs, I said chapter 14. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 14. And let's look at verse 12. 14 and 12. And I'm going to read this to you from some more translations here just to get an understanding. Look what verse 12 say. There is a way that seems right to a man. Come on now. You can be deceived. And, and, and it's no have to always, I say it's always the enemy because he sends us thoughts. You don't make a decision until a thought comes. You have to think about. And that's why we have to set our mind and our affections on things that are above so that we can make the right decision concerning what God has for you and me. And it says here in verse 12, there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Didn't we just read that in Deuteronomy 30 and 19? Oh, come on now. The devil is in the business of making things look like they fresh. Come on now and new. I had a dear friend to me said the devil don't have no new trick. He, he got the same soup just warmed over again. The same old soup. He done warmed it up and you think it's new soup. But it's the same soup because he's deceptive like that. He's the great deceiver. So we want to stick with God's word so that we can know that we are indeed embracing the fresh and the new. Let me read you a translation of uh, the Amplified Version says of verse 12, Proverbs 14, 12. It, the Amplified Version said, there is a way that appears straight. Come on now, somebody. It appears straight. Hallelujah. And then the CEV version says it this way. You might think you are on the right road and still end up dead. Come on, somebody. So you don't, don't be deceived. You stick with the word of God because the word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Amen. But I love what the message version says of Proverbs 14, 12. Proverbs 14, 12, the message version say, there is a way of life that looks harmless enough, but look again, come on now somebody, look again, it's leading you straight to hell. Come on now somebody. Embrace life, the good life. Choose life where God is going and what God is doing. Let's go over, we in Proverbs, go over to chapter 19. Chapter 19, hallelujah. I tell you what, I am excited about this fresh and the new. I'm telling you, I, I want to embrace it. I, we need to look again. Yes, we do. The fresh and the new is a God's plan. Come on now, somebody. The fresh and the new is a God's plan. And we want to go with God's plan. Looking at verse 21 of Proverbs chapter 19. And verse 21, it says, there are, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel is that which will stand. God's counsel is that which will stand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There are many plans. Come on now. We all got a way we can do things. Come on now. Even to not, even today, when I learned that I was going to be minister, I got a plethora of Bible studies that I could choose from. Come on now, somebody. But I had to go to God and say, what is it, Lord, that you want your people to hear? And he took me back to Sunday's message. Because it's been rolling over in my spirit. I, you know, pastor taught us that some things are taught and some are caught. I caught it in my spirit. The fresh and the new. And he's telling me when it comes, you're going to have to choose the fresh and the new. The new plan that God has for you. The new way of doing business. The new way of dealing with your spouse. The new way of dealing with your children. 
the fresh and the new. God has a plan for us. And uh, the King James Version says it this way. There are many devices. Hallelujah. There are many devices. But I love what the message version says of this. The message version says, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose is what will prevail. Have you ever uh, said, well, I've been in these brainstorming meetings where on the job they said, well, let's go and get the think tank. Come on now, somebody. You get together and you got the think tank that are thinking of the plan, putting the plan together. But that's good. I'm not coming against a think tank. But when it come to you and yours, come on now, somebody. Don't go to the think tank. Go to God who has the plan. And he has the way for the plan to go. And so you and I have to embrace that, his plan. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 29. Come on, we going somewhere. Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11. You know, and I know this, this scripture very well. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Look what God says. God has the plan. Come on now. His purpose is what going to uh, bear out his plan. Do you know that God got a plan to make you a million dollars? Come on now. He's got a strategy. I, I often think about that. Because I'm telling you, I'm seeking God. Oh my goodness. He has the good plan for us. In verse 20, 29 and 11, oh my God, it says here, for I know. This is what God's saying. He ain't, he, look, he not, he not no think tank. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. If you want to know who's saying it, God's saying it. I know the thoughts. Another translation says, I know the plans that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Another translation says an expected end. Go ahead and declare that decree that God has an expected end for me. God has an expected end for me. But how do I know that? Look at verse 12. He says, then you will call upon me. Who do you go? Who you going to go to for the plan? You're going to go to your think tank? Come on now. You're going to go to your brainstorming team? Or are you going to go to God and call on him? He says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Verse 13, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. Verse 14 says the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. Come on now, somebody. If we really go and examine ourselves by the standard of God's word, then we will see where we need to embrace the change the fresh and the new. Come on now. I have some things in me that I need to go to God and let him show me in the mirror of his word what is hindering me or what is stopping me from embracing this fresh and the new. Many of us are shaped by, have been shaped by our environment and by our associations and the way that we were raised. And those things may not uh, be the way God would have you to go. Well, mama and them did it this way. Well, dad and them did it this way. But which way does God want us to be shaped? I love what pastor says. Let me go back and read it to you. He says here, uh, what form or shape or mold are you trying to become? Come on now. Are we trying to shape our lives with the neighbors? Come on now. Are we trying to follow that way? Or are we trying to mold uh, our lives according to the think tank or social media or whatever? Why not embrace 
what God wants us to embrace. And so it's important that we embrace the fresh and the new. Are you listening to me right now? We got to embrace it. And it requires uh, change or transformation. It may be small at first, embracing it. It may be small at first, but don't worry about it because God is with you in that embracing. Amen. He's pleased with you starting off. Let's go uh, to uh, 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Second Peter said, well, don't look like nothing that happened. I've embraced this change and don't look like nothing is moving. Don't worry about that. Glory to God. Let's see what Peter says in second Peter chapter two and verse nine. It says, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. God knows how to deliver you. God knows how to help you out of that. Come on now, somebody. He's already got his plan. And if you just embrace a, a, a portion of the fresh, come on now, and you begin in your heart to move toward that, God has a way out to show you which way that you should go. Now let's look at an example. And we, uh, this, I'm ending it. Amen. Praise God. I'm not looking at a clock right now. Praise God. So somebody text, uh, don't text me. <laughs> Just put it up there what time it is so I can know how I'm gauging myself. Glory, uh, glory to God. Praise God. We want to uh, make sure uh, what if you go to Joshua chapter one, hallelujah, glory to God. This is going to bless you right here. Joshua chapter one. Let's look at some examples here. Hallelujah. Everybody love examples. And that's how God teach us. He teaches us. Let me see what I find. Joshua chapter one. He teach us by precept and example. Hallelujah. It don't matter where you are. You might not be where you ought to be. You can thank God you're not where you used to be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. I see it. I see it. Joshua chapter one. Now in Joshua chapter one, just to bring you up to snuff here, Joshua is taken over from Moses and his responsibility, his plan. I mean, God's plan for Joshua and God's purpose from Joshua from the beginning when he was Moses' armor bearer. Come on now, somebody. He started out the armor bearer. He wasn't the high priest. Come on. He was making sure Moses got his feet washed. He was doing the menial things. But God was preparing Joshua to take Moses' place. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And in Joshua chapter 1, the first thing I love that God said to Moses, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, he told Moses just what he said to us in Isaiah 48, uh, 43, 18. Don't remember the past. Come on now. If you want a new job, forget about that old job. You about to embrace something new. Come on now, somebody. If you moving in a new relationship, you better leave that old relationship alone and move in the new relationship because the devil trying to set you up. So here, the first thing, I don't know where that came from, but that was a word for somebody. <laughs> it, don't have nothing to do, it don't have nothing to do with Joshua chapter 1. But Joshua chapter uh, 1 and verse 1. The first thing that God says to Joshua is what? After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Underline that. 
The Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun. What did he say? To Moses' assistant. That's who Joshua is. Verse 2. My servant Moses is what? You can type it in the browser there. <laughs> Moses is dead. So don't be trying to go back there and trying to lead like Moses lead. This is your assignment, Joshua. Because Joshua, guess what? he had been serving Moses all these years. And he wants to go back there where Moses was. But God is saying, Moses is dead. What is God telling you tonight is dead? I, am, I, I would like for y'all, I don't know what that is. But whatever God says is dead, bury it. Bury it. Moses is dead. Whatever that thing is, call it Moses. Come on, it's dead. Because God is about to do something fresh and new. Verse 3 said, Moses is dead. So do what? Arise or get up and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land, come on now, which I'm giving to them, the children of Israel. God is about to do something. He's about to have you to cross over. Everybody got a Jordan. Everybody's going to have to cross over a Jordan. You can't get to the promise unless you cross over the Jordan. You're going to stay on this side of the Jordan in bondage or you're going to go cross over to the promised land. What I want you to understand tonight, you get ready, get ready to embrace the fresh and the new because there's going to be a crossover. I said there's going to be a crossover. What is that crossover? That crossing over is your turning point. It's your turning point. It's your change agent. Joshua was told by God, Moses is dead. Get ready to cross over into that which I promised you, the promised land. Flowing with milk and honey. This is where God wants us to be. Many of us still on this side of Jordan when we want to cross over on the other side. And look at what he told him in verse 3. Because over on that side, every place the sole of your foot tread upon, I have given it to you. Not he getting ready to give it to you. Come on now. He said, I've already given it to you. But you're going to have to do that crossover. You're going to have to embra embrace that fresh and that new. He said, I told Moses I was going to do it for you. He says, from the wilderness, come on now, from the wilderness in this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites. Somebody's squatting on your blessing right now. But if you don't cross over, you don't embrace it, guess what? You won't partake of it. It's going to be a crossing. It's going, you're going to have to choose to stay on this side of Jordan or get up and go on the other side of Jordan. Come on, because over there is your blessing. He said, the land of the Hittites and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. I'm telling you tonight, if you choose to embrace this fresh and this new, that God will take you and give you... How far can you see? Come on now. Verse 5. And if you're worrying about the squatters over there, come on now, somebody. Oh, them folks over there ain't going to let me have it. Them folks over there are not going to. Oh, come on, stop that. That's mealy mouthing. God said he was going to go with you. And he said, no man, verse 5. You can read it for yourself. No man. You hear me? No man shall be able to stand before you, not just when you cross over, but all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Come on now, somebody. You can leave uh, the oppression, which is the other side of Jordan, where Egypt was and the wilderness or you can embrace the fresh and the new. Come on now. I don't know where you are. But this word tonight ought to be able to give you something 
to hang on to, to grip so that you can get over there. Come on now. I'm not talking about in the sweet by and by. No. It'll be, come on now, somebody. I'm talking about the blessing. God told them in Deuteronomy 30, we over in Joshua chapter 1. And here's what I want you to understand right here. You're going to have to be strong and of good courage. Look at verse 6. He says, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Be strong and of good courage for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. That's Joshua assigned. Because Joshua, he knows that this is a big assignment. Guess what? What God is about to do for you is so big. So I want you to understand you're going to have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And be of good courage. If you don't have nobody to encourage you, encourage yourself. Go back and read the story again. And see what God says that he's going to do to you, for you. And, 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 and what he's go, how he's going to be with you. And he says, only be strong and very courageous. He says it number two time. That you may observe to do all according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may what? Prosper wherever you go. You're going to have to hold on to the word of God where your faith lies, which is unshakable faith. And then he says, what else do you have to do? You, this book of the law, which is the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth. You're going to have to open your mouth. Can't sit with your mouth closed and expect to go over the other side. You're going to have to get up, do some walking, and do some talking. He said, don't let the word depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. And verse 9, my last scripture. Have I not commanded you? That's what he's telling you tonight. He's saying to us Sunday. He's saying, I have com not com haven't I not commanded you to be strong? He told him three times and he's telling us three times. Have I not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Fear will cause you to forsake the blessings of God. Come on now, somebody. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we see here, it's important that when we embrace, embrace the fresh and the new, God is trying to get us somewhere. And I pray tonight that you will embrace it. Don't look back at the past. You say what God says and mean what you say. Because God's word is truth. Once God spoke it, he didn't change his mind. If he said he's going to give you the promise, then you embrace the promise. You may not be wherever. He said, you ain't, you, these folks hadn't walked over there before. Come on now, stop saying what somebody else saying and say what God says. I tell you, I have been young and I used to say what they said. And now I'm old. I'm saying what he said. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to say what the words say. I have seen the blessings of God. You have seen the blessings of God. It don't matter how big the territory is or how many giants in the territory. With God with you, you will take the giant's head and his territory. So I'm just saying tonight, embrace the fresh and the new, uh, the other way around, the new and the fresh. You guys be blessed tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope that you were blessed by this word. Glory to God. I know that I was blessed by the word. I'm excited. Hallelujah. About what God is about to do. Hallelujah. You Are you excited? You ought to say, I am embracing the fresh and the new. 
I am excited about what God is getting ready to do and where he's about to take me. Come on, somebody. He's no respecter of person. He wants to bless you. And he has given us choices, options, and told us which option to take. And I'm going to take him up on it. I'm not going to halt between two opinions. I'm not going to waver on one side or the other. I'm just going to walk in and embrace the new. That's you. The new you. Glory to God. But you don't know. I don't care what I don't know. I'm embracing the fresh and the new. Glory to God. And at tonight, if you are on here or you're listening in some way and you have not embraced that, the first embracing <coughs> is to embrace Jesus. He is the gateway to the fresh and the new. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you will open the door and let me come in, I will come in and sup with you. He wants to come into your heart tonight. And I'm here to just share with you the good news, the good news of the gospel. And that is that Jesus loves you. And the first embracing that we should embrace is him. He is fresh and he's new. He'll take you places that you've never gone before. He'll give you thoughts that you never had before. He'll heal you in places that have been laying dormant. But he is that one that you will have to embrace. All you have to do is ask him to come into your heart. He tells us he's standing at the door knocking right now. Open the door so that he can come in. He has loved you from the beginning. Why? Because he died for you. Over 2,000 years ago, he died for me and for you. He saw us. The Bible says that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. That was me. That was you. I wasn't born yet. And nor were you over 2,000 years ago. But yet he died for us. Why don't you embrace him tonight? Just invite him into your heart. Now repeat after me if you'd like to do that. Dear Lord Jesus, everybody repeat this together. Let's encourage them. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me over 2,000 years ago. And I want to embrace you with all my heart. So therefore, I ask you to come into my heart. Save me now. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are right now my Lord and my Savior. I trust you, Jesus. And as I embrace you tonight, thank you for coming into my heart and putting me on a path of newness that I may walk with you, that I may talk with you that you may carry me in the direction that you would have me to go. Thank you for saving me. Well, if you prayed that prayer, hallelujah, glory to God, you are born again. You are well on your way. Don't worry about, hallelujah, how long it's going to take. Just keep walking, amen. For we walk by faith. Tonight for you. Again, for those who are here wondering why is Minister Logan on here tonight? Well, Pastor is in Detroit. He and Pastor Leslie visiting their family. He wants you to know that he loves you. He'll be back in the pulpit on Sunday. So I invite you to come out to New Beginnings on Sunday. Our second uh, Sunday, we are having services the first and the second Sunday of each month. Pastor started recasting the vision Sunday. If you want to come out on next Sunday, I mean this Sunday coming, you will hear the second part. He said there'll be several, several uh, messages regarding casting the vision. I have caught a hold of the vision. Have you caught hold of it already? So now you are waiting for your next instructions on when the crossover. So I invite you to come back. Thank you so much for joining it. Now is opportunity to prosper. Come on now, somebody. You want to get in on this? You want to get in on this? Uh, that uh, uh, to sow? Because God gives seed to the sower. 
And we know that the word of God is seed. And so if you have received the word, which is seed, well, you want to do what the word says to do. And in Luke 6, 38, it says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. In the name of Jesus, I declare because you crossing over, amen, to embrace the fresh and the new, God is going to fill up your bank accounts. Because what you're giving now is going to increase in the days and years to come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have three ways that you can give. You can give by PayPal, uh, by going to newbeginningsclc.org. Or you can give by Cash App. That's New Beginnings uh, uh, Plural CLC. I'm sorry, CLC. Yes, New Beginnings Plural CLC. Or you can mail in your tithe. And your offerings to P.O. Box 320658. 320658. That's Flowood, Mississippi. 39232. Amen. Well, if you are uh, uh, completed, I want to pray over your offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for giving us seed to sow. You have already, Father, in the name of Jesus, told us. That if we give, you will give back to us. And Father, not only will you give back to us what we stole, but you said, Father, you will give back to us good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. We don't give begrudgingly or out of necessity, but with the cheerful prompt to do it hard do we give. And we thank you, Father, for giving us this seed to sow. Now we release our angels to go forth and bring us that which we have need of, not just for ourselves, but also for the kingdom. Lord God, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for it. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for your giving. You are sowing into good ground, the ground of God's word, and God is faithful to his promises. Amen. He will do just what he promised. So get ready for the fresh and the new, and I'll see you. Uh, what's the day? If you come on prayer on Saturday, I'll see you Saturday, and then I'll see you on Sunday. You guys have a great rest of your evening. And be blessed in the name of Jesus.